بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, This is Human from Khalil Center We may throw the term around um, a lot anxiety, stress um, but what does it actually mean? Underlying anxiety is actually uh, the emotion of fear um, and what is fear? Fear is, as explained by scholars of our uh, of the Islamic intellectual uh, heritage, we have the likes of Imam al-Ghazali and Imam al-Razi, for example, that say that it is a anticipation of a future threat, right? A a future threat that we don't like or an unpleasant future threat. Fear is uh, is a very normal reaction and a very normal response to a uh, imminent threat. And in the case of the COVID-19 corona virus, uh, of course, we recognize that this is a very real threat that it poses to us. And so that there is a certainly a healthy degree of anxiety that's there, which allows us to ensure that we protect ourselves, we protect our families, that we don't go out, that we practice social distancing, that we take the appropriate information from our health officials and put that into action. So while fear is a very normal reaction and response, and in fact a healthy and adaptive response, there is also the other side of the coin. And that is that when it's done in excess, or something is beyond your control, beyond what you've already exerted yourself beyond, right? So we have control over our actions, not leaving the house, um, you know, not having contact with individuals, even stopping handshaking as, as hard as it may be for some of us because we really like to feel socially connected. But beyond that, we don't have any control as to whether we're going to get sick or not, whether um, this is going to inevitably catch up with us or not. And that still evokes a degree of anxiety and fear in us. And when we don't have control and the fear is still remaining, that feels um, even all the more scary. And this is where fear does not necessarily serve as well. And it starts to become excessive and it can have adverse effects upon us. Now, what is underlying this actual fear? Um, what are we all really afraid of? So let's ask ourselves this question. What is with all of the social distancing and staying at home? Really, I think what we're doing is we're trying to avoid death. And that's really what it is. Certainly, there's a natural survival instinct in all of us. And we don't wish for calamity upon us. And we wish for good health and, and, and positive outcomes and a long life of ibadah. However, at the same time, we also are trying to really you know, avoid death. And that's really what's underlying it. And, and ultimately, what we're all scared of is dying. How do we come to terms with death? And once we've exerted ourselves beyond what we have control over, so we've controlled and done what we need to do and tried to keep ourselves safe, I think the rest is resigning it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I believe that the attempt to have any more control at that point does not serve us well and and it fuels the anxiety that spirals out of control what are things that we end up doing we start to over consume information we start to lose sleep at night we start to look at social uh, excessively look at social media we start to um, imagine or talk about the potential bacteria that may have somehow made it through the cracks into our own homes stocking up our garage with you know uh, with uh, with the end of times type of uh, you know uh, toilet paper and that type of response is not really useful to us. And so what, what type of response, though, is useful to us? And the type of response is for us to really come to terms with our own mortality. If we think about the, light, the, the, the example of the, of the story of the Sahabi with the Prophet wasallam, that really, for me, uh, was, was consolation and resonated with me. And that is that, you know, somebody came to the Prophet Sallallahu and asked him, uh, uh, when is the hour? And the Prophet Sallallahu rather than getting into all of the details around it, what he did was in that moment engaging potentially the, 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 the fear in the individual, his response was, what have you prepared for it? Right? And so the question isn't 
for us to be able to overly investigate this, this virus, but rather what we could be doing as a practical measure is to prepare for the life hereafter. And if there's any certainty that we all have, it is that we will die at some point, that this life is a transition, is a transitory life, that there is a life hereafter, and that how long we stay in this earth, whether it's this much or this much, the days are counted. And, uh, and that's for certain. كُلِّ نَفْسٍ ذَائِقَةِ الْمَوْتِ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَ الْيَقِينِ Right, the Quran says until وَعْبُدُ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينِ That keep worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until what? Until that which is certain comes to you. Death comes to you. And I think that's what we need to be really facing and being able to come to terms with our real mortality. If we look at the life of the Sahaba, that's what they were doing. If we look at Khalid bin Walid in his response to, um, uh, to one of his enemies, he said, That we love death just as you love life. So coming to terms with our own mortality is much easier said than done. So we want to acknowledge that. This isn't a prescription uh, to say that this is going to be a very easy process. And we have to recognize that once we face that reality, we come head to head with our own mortality, we will feel anxiety. It's a very natural and normal human response. We will necessarily feel that anxiety and that anxiety is good. It will allow us but, uh, to be able to face it, but very importantly, we need to transition that anxiety into preparation. We need to recognize through reframing and thinking about the fact and realizing and taking a lesson from all of this that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is really in charge, that He is boss. Aiz ibn Abd salam talks about the benefits of trials and tribulations and he says that one way is for us to take a lesson and to realize the magnitude and the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ma'rifati izz al-rububiyyati wa qahriha That His lordship and His capacity and control and in and accompanying that is the recognition that the human being is not in control. That we don't have all the control that we want to have. And so one of the ways is to really hand over control to the one who is really in control. And there is actually a lot of ease and freedom that we can feel in being able to just let go, to be able to let go and trust God, to let go and trust taqdeer, to trust fate, to trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I think that's one of the things that we could do. So some of the practical measures I think is to recognize that anxiety produces a future oriented uh, you know, psychological response. We start to think about what will happen in the future. That's useful in so much as it informs our presence, okay? So it informs and allows us to do something in the present. What are things that we could be doing in the present? We could know, notice and know that we're not going to have, um, you know, unlimited amounts of prayers. So we need to focus on our current prayers in the present, to have a presence of mind, to pray every salah and prayer as if it's our last to cherish the moment, to have gratitude for every breath that we take. The Prophet ﷺ had instructed that even if we knew that the Yom, yom Al-Qiyamah was tomorrow, he said, still you should plant a tree. Plant a tree even though we'll never see it grow. Why? Because we're not fatalistic. We don't want to fall into this over despondency. What's the point? We're all going to die anyways. That's a frame of mind that's not useful. What we want to be doing is to cherish every breath and moment that we have, to have gratitude for it, and to spend the time with our children, with our family members. Um, of course, those of which that are our immediate family members that may be within our households. And to know that we have that, that this free time or this opportunity to be um, away from social interactions and away from our society is really our opportunity. It's our opportunity to self-reflect, to come to terms with our own mortality and to face 
and, and, and to have gratitude, appreciation, and a presence of mind of what we have to face in this moment because we may not have it forever. And I hope that these advices and these mechanisms and these, uh, these things can allow us to better uh, um, cope with this difficult reality. We always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for afiyah, for a long life. We don't wish for death, but we need to be prepared for it. Wa akhirun da'wana, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.